Can you guys hear me all right? Is this okay? Okay, okay that's fine. Uh, so, I'm going to pray real fast. Let me get this over. Alright. Um, Jesus, I just pray that you give me peace and you just let whatever I say tonight be from you and just make me a vessel for you. And um, whoever needs to hear this tonight, just give them focus and clarity and understanding. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. Um, so, for those of you that don't know me, I am Eric. Hey, Eric. Hey. Hi. Um, so, I'm from New Jersey, born and raised for 13 years, in a place called Point Pleasant. It wasn't very pleasant there, but it's okay. It's next to the beach, so learned how to surf and learned how to do a bunch of stuff there that I still do today. And um, so yeah, at age 13, I moved here to Florida. Um, moved to Satellite Beach, where I went to high school there, at Satellite High School. And Graduated 2013 and didn't really know what to do. Did a couple classes, pretty much failed them because I just wasn't ready to go to college at all. I just did not have the mental acuity for that at the time. So, um, yeah, it wasn't till few years after high school that I finally went to college and then got my associates and then I lived in Gainesville for two years and I came back here and I took a class at Eastern Florida, took chemistry Amen. and uh, I met Jenna there and I'll let you guys know that um, I had not given my life to Jesus at all at that point. I was basically, I guess, what some would call agnostic. I was just unsure about anything. Like, no, I would, my parents took me to church when I was like, what, like two, maybe, I don't know. Just had no relationship with God whatsoever. So, Jenna invited me to church here at Lifeline, and that was, October of 2017, and I see like a lot of people here that were there that day, and um, that, was, that was my first time at church, and then I eventually gave my life to Jesus on December 13th of 2017. So pretty, yeah, two months. But yeah, ever since then, I've just seen my life change in amazing ways, and um, yeah, and I feel like God has really, he's never really put it on my heart to talk to anyone or preach or just give a message to anyone until recently. And one of the words I heard from him was strength. And like, <laughs> more like, just like that's what I go to the gym all the time. I'm like, okay, strength, cool. Like, what are we talking about? But um, I'm going to start by giving you guys some verses because I'm going to talk about them a little bit as I give my message. So I'm going to start with um, Isaiah 40, 26 through 31. Is everyone ready? No. Okay. okay. Isaiah 40, 26 through 31. So this says, Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens, who created all these. He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each one of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, 
and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. And I have four verses I'm going to give you guys, so, but I will talk about them more. Um, the second one is Proverbs 3, 5 through 8. So, like, just keep these verses in mind as, I'm, as I talk about my message, because 40, 26 through 31. Yeah, the second one is Proverbs 3, 5 through 8. Okay, so trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and always submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. The third one is Hebrews 2, 14 through 18. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil. Actually, hold on. I want to read this in NLT because I like the way they put it in NLT. Okay. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. We also know that the Son did not come to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people, since he himself has gone through suffering and testing. He is able to help us when we are being tested. And the last one is 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Okay, so I'm going to start my message, and I'm going to start off with a question. So how many in here are very stubborn people. Yes. Jenna, definitely. <laughs> Just kidding. No, I'm stubborn. Yes. I am very stubborn. I can, I, I, at least I can admit it, I guess. But um, <laughs> we as stubborn people, we want to do things on our own. Our, our pride forces us to prove our own independence. But when we struggle, we almost always try to go at it alone, and we eventually end up failing. That is because we are a flesh. We are inherently weak. We all are. Even me, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, <laughs> we need to rely on our faith in God to help us through everything. And that's when I go back to 2 Corinthians 9 through 10. And that is, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And I can put it to you another way, and that is, 
that even in all our strengths, there is still weakness because we are imperfect. We will struggle, we will stumble, and we will fail because we are flesh. No matter how strong I am, there will come a moment where I am not strong enough. No matter how smart I am, there will come a moment where I am not smart enough. No matter how nice, wise, or resilient you think you are, you will still fail because even our strengths will one day be our weaknesses. So where's the hope? All the things of flesh are weak, right? Well, mostly. There's only one human being made of flesh that is not weak. Only one is perfect and truly strong. Not was, is. Because he died for us and he lives in us. Hebrews 2, 14, or Hebrews 2, 14 through 18. Since the, ch- since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all, free those, oh, sorry, I want to sing, I mean, I want to say the uh, NLT version. So I just like that one so much better. It just sounds so much better. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all the all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. We also know that the Son did not come to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people. Since he himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. Jesus is alive in us. And he is our one and only true state or true strength we have in the flesh. So we have to rely on God and we have to rely on Jesus because he wants to help us every minute of every day. There's never a task too small or too big for God. I took, I mean, I only took two classes this past spring, but I was starting to struggle because it was my first actual semester at, at university and it was just like, I don't know, I was kind of overwhelmed because I was used to pretty easy classes and I remember just thinking I wasn't studying enough and I'd be studying before a test, like literally five hours before a test I'd be studying and then it'd be about an hour before I had to take the test and I would start to like kind of break a little bit and it'd be like I'd start to get stressed out and it's like I don't know what I'm going to do and then God would give me peace because I started to just read his word before a test instead of just trying to study more because it just relaxed me, it gave me peace and it just just gave me everything I needed and We need to just reach out to God whenever we need help. We can't just try to go at it alone. We can't just study harder or try to push through it ourselves. That's not how it works. Um, Sorry. Yeah, God's hand is always stretched out to us, and all we have to do is reach up and grab it. And um, you just give your worries to God, and I mean truly give your worries to God. Just let them go. Like, God can't take away our fears, our worries, and our anxieties if we won't let go of them. Um, just think about it like, like your your fear, your anxiety, and your worries is just it's just barbed wire, and God can't just take it away if you're still holding on to it because it's just going to rip you apart. And 
you just need to let go of them. You need to just forget about them because that's the only way God can take them away from you. So that brings me back to Isaiah 40, 26 through 31. Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord. My my cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. His understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. And I think I'm just going to end with that. But, um, yeah, we need to seek God all we can. There's nothing too small for God. You can't, we can't just be stubborn and try to do everything by ourselves because we're not meant to be like that. We're not meant to be alone. We're meant to seek God and fill that hole within us through any means necessary, even if it's just asking for help all the time. But yeah, that's it. <laughs>